Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, excellent. A uh, couple things came to mind. This, the idea of the reporters are surprised. You know, the opposition to the Schumer bill just came out of nowhere. Reminds me of the, uh, the this is, a, I don't know if it's an apocryphal story, but Pauline Kael was the movie reviewer for, I think, New York Magazine a long time ago in the 1972 election. Um, as uh, those of you old enough to remember, um, uh, Nixon won every state but Massachusetts and then the District of Columbia. And Pauline Kael in the newsroom the next day said, how can that be? No one I know voted for Nixon. <laughs> well, it's a similar thing. No one these reporters know uh, is uh, skeptical of uh, mass immigration and amnesty before enforcement. The uh, other point I wanted to make on uh, this is the... Um, a uh, point Jeremy made about um, uh, the reporter who said that he couldn't get from any of the advocacy groups an actual, you know, number, a kind of limiting principle. I tried to do this years ago. Uh, we published something called Blueprints for an Ideal Legal Immigration Policy. It's online somewhere. It's pre-internet, so I think, I don't know, we scanned it in or something. But anyway, it's there. And so I called all the people all across. I called Cecilia Munoz, now running immigration at the White House when she was at La Raza, Frank Sherry, all kinds of people. And I said, look, I just want 1,500 to 2,000 words on what you actually want at the end. What is your ideal legal immigration? Anything you say, I'm going to print. I'm only editing for typos. None of them would do it. Because honestly, I mean, I got some minor people to do it, but none of the actual major actors. And I think the reason is their immigration, their ideal immigration policy is one word, more. Just more. Well, um, the, uh, before our honoree, Bonnie Urbe, comes up and uh, has a few comments, um, I wanted to show a clip from one of her, from her programs called To the Contrary. Uh, and they did a half hour program. Uh, they've done several on immigration. This one specifically is on the birth tourism issue. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, this is people coming from overseas. The people highlighted here are from China, but it's happening from a lot of other places, Russia, Turkey, and else, Korea, and elsewhere. Um, women come here pregnant, have their baby, get the passport because the baby's a U.S. citizen, and then go home. Often this is so that they can come here to study, and uh, as U.S. citizens, it's easier to get into the University of California at Berkeley. Um, or um, in some cases from Turkey and Korea, I understand it's done to be able to dodge the draft. So that if you have a boy, you send him here at 14, and that way he'll stay until he can't be drafted anymore because you don't want to be in the Turkish army. Um, I sure don't. Um, so, uh, so it's an important issue. And um, um, Bonnie did a whole program. And this is just going to be, a, I think, a two and a half or three minute segment, um, which was, I mean, I know about this. I mean, obviously, I've, I've read about this a good deal. This actually had some interesting stuff in it that I had never seen any reporter actually uh, find, uh, talk about before. Can we turn the lights down? OK. Yeah. Hello, I'm Bonnie Urbe. Welcome to this special edition of To the Contrary. We're here in Southern California, where we're going to introduce you to the new Americans and the burgeoning industry that's growing up around them. On an ethical level, I think it's very concerning. It's not very American. Um, you know, as an immigrant myself, I came over here when I was eight years old. Uh, my, my father came over here um, first, left our entire family, worked two jobs, earned enough money to send um, money to get visas for our family. We came over here. Uh, we're all citizens now. We're very proud to be Americans, and we worked really hard at it. And essentially, this birth tourism, it's like buying citizenship. Rosanna Mitchell is the leader of Not in Chino Hills. Not here, not anywhere. Not here, not anywhere. If you come here, you can buy your citizenship, five to 10,000 a month. Uh, essentially, you can come have your baby here and then go back to your country. Even members of the Chinese American Association of Chino Hills are against birth tourism. I feel it's, it's not right. And uh, I think I did all whatever necessary. Uh, to, to get my citizenship from beginning until now. And I think that's the right process to do it. I have a soft spot for those people who wanted to come in the United States because, like myself, I came from outside the United States. But I went through the legal process, the right way of doing it. It's not the fault of those pregnant women. Any parent 
want, would like to have their children have a better life. That's nothing wrong with that. Now, this business of maternity hotels is doing it in a way that I feel it's exploiting the Constitution of the United States. Daniel Deng is a lawyer who represents women who have gone through birth tourism brokers and are now suing them. He says many of the women are being scammed in several ways. And you get um, enjoy a very good health system, health care uh, service in, in the United States. And many, many mothers are complaining because when they come over here, they were showing that one woman should have one room and one, have one caretaker taking care of the baby. When, but when they come over here, when, once the baby is delivered, they have 10 babies. They are crying every night. And only one caretaker took care of the 10 mother or the 10 baby. Deng says one healthcare worker was so overworked, she dropped a baby and the baby died. Then there are concerns over what the brokers represent and what they deliver. And there are so many brokers in China who are competing for their business. So when they first came over here, uh, it turned out that the living condition is not what they promised in China. And frankly, many of those brokers in China, they never been to the United States. So they would present a misperception and they would get the five-star hotel photos and pay said, you know, you're gonna stay here or get the five-star hotel, uh, hotel as a hospital, that this is what you, uh, you're gonna get. That was, uh, you know, I'm not sure any reporter actually thought to ask local Chinese Americans, what do you think of this? Uh, I'm, I, this was actually a great idea. Um, and um, I think we learned something or at least people who saw the show learned something from this. Um, the debate uh, last year during the surrounding the whole Schumer-Rubio bill in the Senate focused a, a lot on the amnesty issue and enforcement issues. Um, and that's, you know, natural. Uh, more recently, the center's revelations on the drop in deportations and the um, uh, releases of criminal aliens has been uh, dominating the news. Just this morning, Senate, uh, Secretary Johnson was asked about it uh, in the hearing before the Senate Judiciary Committee. And these are obviously important concerns, but sometimes those kind of immediate news stories crowd out consideration of larger questions or consideration of issues that are still smaller than a man's hand but can um, become loom large in the future. Uh, and Bonnie Urbay's program, uh, to the contrary, has, among obviously all kinds of other issues that it's dealt with, tried to grapple with some of these issues. Um, it did a, uh, during the debate last year, did a special, a half hour special, not looking at the issues of enforcement or is the fence high enough or what have you, but uh, the kind of longer term concerns that relate to immigration as they affect health care, poverty, natural resources. And likewise, this birth tourism issue is something that's reported on kind of episodically, but not in this uh, detailed way. And this is something that has long-term effects and consequences that people don't really see in the, you know, in the short term. Uh, and these are some of the reasons that the center has chosen Bonnie Urbe, who is the host and executive in charge of To the Contrary, to be this year's recipient of the Eugene Katz Award for Excellence in the Coverage of Immigration. To the Contrary, which is on PBS, uh, is now in its 22nd year on the air and features a rotating panel of women journalists and commentators from a variety of political perspectives covering the whole gamut of issues, obviously not just immigration, but politics, Supreme Court issues, all the rest of it. Um, the program has been honored repeatedly. Just this year, uh, if I am correct, it was, it was recognized as the best TV talk show by, the, by American women in radio and television. Uh, to the contrary, it's been recognized for uh, financial reporting, for coverage of mental health issues, and a variety of other issues. Uh, Bonnie has been covering it, politics in various forms for decades. Uh, she was a local TV reporter in Tampa and Atlanta and Washington, D.C., then worked in radio at UPI and Mutual. I think Mutual is gone too, isn't it? Uh, yeah, and uh, NBC Radio. She was a columnist for Scripps Howard uh, News Service until that was closed down last year. 
And uh, she really, I think, has been fulfilling an important role in shining light on some of these immigration issues that even for reporters who aren't ridiculously biased, as uh, Jeremy sometimes pointed out, if they're dealing with the kind of horse race immediate day-to-day -day issues, they can't stand back and do that kind of reporting. So, um, Bonnie, we're uh, if you could come up, we're honored to <laughs> offer you the award. The, the actual award, the physical tchotchke, is this really great clock, which you will have seen uh, if you have came to our previous awards. The problem is that it's in UPS's warehouse somewhere, and it'll be here. So in, in the meantime, we have, uh, so that you have an actual tchotchke for the next couple of days to recognize to your award, we have i got to get this open. A drinking vessel from the U.S. Border Patrol Museum. <laughs> so. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you so much.